Hi, I'm Bob Tritipo, manager of the FMH Home Medical Equipment and Sleep Apnea Therapy Programs. With me is Lynette Battles, manager of cardiopulmonary services, and Darla Walls, a respiratory care practitioner in HME. Darla provides sleep therapy equipment and education to patients with OSA, or obstructive sleep apnea. We join many at FMH who are participating in the OSA initiative to increase awareness uh, of patients coming into our hospital with OSA and to also understand the basic and effective use of the equipment that they bring with them. Lynette and I will now provide some basic instruction for setup of the patient CPAP equipment when they are admitted to the hospital. Where does the unit go? The unit should be placed on the bedside table beside the patient's bed, closest to the bed, never using the over-the-bed table. Um, over-the-bed tables can provide easy an easy outlet for the patients to inadvertently knock the unit off. It never should be placed above the head as well because again the unit can be easily knocked off. Where's the humidifier located at on these machines? The humidifier is located um, on the Respironics M series. The unit is the humidifier is located on the left hand side of the actual CPAP device, two separate pieces of equipment. With the Philips Respironics Sleep System 1, it is located to the right of the CPAP. And again, two separate pieces of equipment sit here, this side of CPAP, this side is heated humidifier, humidifier and CPAP. To get the chamber out, you just want to firmly pull and pull out the chamber. You want to fill the chamber with your sterile water that is provided in the in, in patient. You want to fill through the straight side, and as you fill, you'll notice water levels rising. Never want to exceed the maximum fill line. So once you have it filled, gently lie it flat and slide it in to the heated humidifier, pushing all the way so it's securely in and the door closes easily. And that was the M series for the Respironics. Sleep System 1 unit, again, you just want to gently raise the door, slide out the humidifier. With this unit you want to fill through the top. Again, water level rises, never exceeding the maximum fill line. And inserting it back into the unit all the way, pushing firmly so that the door closes firmly. How do you turn on the CPAP or BiPAP machine? With the M-Series Respironics, you want to use the center button, which is the universal start-stop button, so that turns the unit on. You hear a beep. Airflow comes out the back. To look at the digital display that's underneath, you want to lift on the right side. And right there is the patient's set pressure. If the patient feels as though that that is blowing too much pressure, whatever their complaint is, this is called their ramp button. You want to push the ramp button. You'll notice in the window that the pressure will go down to the lower setting of four. And now over a 20 minute period, the pressure will be gradually worked up to the set pressure of eight. We'll never go higher than their set pressure. We'll never go lower than the ramp set pressure. Ramp is for their comfort encourage ramp whenever they feel as though pressure is too much. To turn this unit off, push and release to the center of the round button. For Sleep System 1, Philips Respironics unit, notice that you have four squares in the window with this unit. The default square for every night use is the therapy square. The other squares that are there are informational purposes only, not anything anybody has to do on a daily basis. To turn this unit on, it's press and release the center of the round button. Again, the unit will always go to its set pressure. Patient complaining that the pressure feels too much, this is their ramp. To lower pressure, to the ramp setting, and gradually work up over a 20 minute period. To turn the unit off, press and release. Correctly setting the humidifier setting for your patient. The turn, the, turn the unit on. This is your humidifier setting. One is the lowest heat setting, provides least amount of heat, least amount of humidification. 
Higher numbers, 3, 4, and 5, increase heat, which also increases the amount of humidification. Patient complains of extremely dry throat, dry, stuffy nose. You do want to have settings at 3, 4, or 5. You can max it out. Those patients who don't like warm air, those patients that like the fan blowing in their face, you want to turn the dial down to the 2 or the 1. The lower the number, the cooler the heat setting. That was the M series. Coming over to the Philips System 1, turning the unit on each time you turn the unit on, this number, a number is displayed above the knob right here. Again, same thing, turning the knob to a lower setting, least amount of heat, least amount of humidification, increasing the number to five, which is increases and maxes out the amount of heat and humidity provided to the patient. Again, it's based on what their needs are. Can you show me how to apply various types of masks that we have? Different types of applications, depending on the patient's choice upon setup, um, they might bring in. Some types are nasal pillows. This is considered to be a nasal pillow type of device. Fits gently into the nostrils. To put this on somebody, what you would like to do is grab the back strap, which sits at the back of the head, open it, insert pillows into nostrils first, then bring headgear up and over, and securing it with your Velcro pulls. If you could hold right in the front for me. There you go. So it's snugly up into the nostrils. With this one, it does have a built-in chin. So you do want to loosen that to put underneath of the patient's chin and again, securing it with the Velcro. This adjustment at the top of the head, what this does, it helps lift it up off of the patient's ears if they feel as though it's rubbing, or if it's riding too close to the eyes, you can let it go and gently snug it up. Pillows should be firm into the nostrils so that they don't want to bounce. You don't want to have any bounciness because as they roll and turn, they'll be easily dislodged. To take the mask off, hold in the front and get the back strap and bring it up and over. This is a, a nasal mask that covers the nose. For this mask, it's easy in and out just by taking the black strap through the hook. Again, undoing one side of the headgear at the strap, holding the mask, taking this tail, lifting it up, putting the patient's nose into the mask first, then pulling headgear up and over. Notice with this headgear, straps are running right around the temples, to the back, to the base of the neck, coming underneath the ear loop into the hook and again snugging up the straps with your velcro pull tabs you don't want to over tighten the mask that can cause skin breakdown skin cuts and skin bruising so it's gently securing it minimal one finger underneath of top and bottom headgear once the patient's finished using the unit simply holding the gray hook taking the black strap through the hook, and again, bringing headgear up and over. For full face mask application, this is the Respironics unit. Again, it's just like the other masks. You can either have both sides unhooked or simply hook one side. It's a ball clip. Push it in and rock it back, holding the mask with one hand, grabbing the strap, lifting it up. Again, patient's face into the mask, bringing headgear up and over. Same strap supply, running right above temples, base of the neck, coming underneath of the ear. I got it. Putting the ball clip into there and securing. With the Velcro pulls. And again, you don't want to over tighten mass. Most patients adjustments will be here at the bottom versus the top and same rules apply being able to put at least a minimum oops, sorry of one finger or more underneath of top and bottom headgear having the mask tightly on the face does not generally ensure the seal its proper fit of the mask
and adjustment of the straps. To get out of the mask, one hand on the mask, getting the ball clip, bringing it straight forward, and then again bringing headgear from back up and over. One thing to keep in mind is when you're putting any mask on a patient, be sure that you have the tubing connected to the mask ahead of time with airflow going through the mask, otherwise the patient could feel claustrophobic or get scared. To place the tubing onto the patient's CPAP device, it's located at the back of the unit for this black M-series respironics. It's a rocky motion up and over. Same motion goes to the base of the mask as well. Again, always turning the unit on before the application device is applied to the patient. Turning the unit on with the center button. Rocking it up and over. And again, always applying it to the patient. Pillows into nostrils first, headgear up and over. Sleep system one, tubing gets connected to the top of the humidifier here. Again, rocking motion up and over. Again, the bottom of the mask, rocking motion up and over. And turning the unit on before applying it to the patient. I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope so much that it helps you with applying CPAP and BiPAP machines to our patient population at FMH. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to use your respiratory care department as your resource. We, in turn, will work with our HME company to help provide a better patient experience. Thank you.